and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is working with Microsoft Dataverse Column Security and Power Automate. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So you may run into situations where you do have some sensitive data inside of Microsoft Dataverse and you want to enable some additional protection. So there is something that you can go ahead and add to a column called Enable Column Security. Now the challenge with this is that you do get additional security, but what if you are trying to go ahead and access that data from other systems like Power Automate? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna figure out how we can go ahead and do that here today. Now, one thing I do wanna call out that Secure Columns is not a substitute for Azure Key Vault. Where you do have secrets, tokens, credentials, those are best housed inside of Azure Key Vault but if there is some other data that can be rather sensitive, you want a little bit more protection, enable column security makes perfect sense. Now, one thing I do wanna call out is if you do enable column security and you do allow a user to connect to the data store and use Power Automate, you should be protecting that data end to end. You don't want Power Automate to be your leaky valve in this whole secure platform and to do so, or to prevent that from happening, you should use secure inputs, secure outputs to ensure that that sensitive data doesn't leak into our run history logs. So that's very important. And I do have a video that I've gone through this before, link in the description if you're looking for additional information on that specific feature. Okay, so when we talk about Microsoft Dataverse, what I do have here is I've got my regular table and uh, I'm just calling it encrypted sample. I've got a few columns that I've added myself. One is called an encrypted column, and then I have another column that represents the unencrypted data, and I wanna be able to show you the difference when you are in Power Automate. Now, for my encrypted column, what I do have is enable column security. So I basically go ahead and click on the details of that specific column, I check this box, I hit done, and generally I'm, I'm good there. That's, that's what we're talking about here today. Now, there's something really important to understand here though. Like in this context, I'm an admin. I'm a system admin and I think what you're gonna find is that the behaviors are very different when you're not that system admin and that's a core part of this overall video. Now, when we go ahead and try to access this data from Power Automate with a non-admin account, even though that this user has been added to a custom role that allows them to go ahead and to create and read data from this specific table, when you try to access this data, you're going to get an error. It'll be similar to what we do see here. And what's happening is that we don't have create permissions for the encrypted column here. And what we do need to do is we need to go ahead and create a field security privilege role that will allow us to go ahead and to access that information from both a create perspective, update perspective, and read perspective. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do here is we're gonna create this field security profile and we'll be able to go ahead and ensure that this user has the appropriate access. So let's get out of slides, let's go ahead and let's jump into a demo. I do wanna call out here if you're looking for more information about this feature, Here's the link, I will also include that in the description if you want to check that out. Okay, so let's start off. I'm gonna be logged in with an admin user. So this is a system admin in this environment and it's going to obviously have the elevated permissions. I'm the one that's gone ahead and created that table. I've created this encrypted column. I've enabled column security. And then I've also gone ahead and created an unencrypted column. And this is not going to contain that additional flag. So that's gonna be unencrypted. Now, if I head over to Power Automate, I'm going to go ahead and just do some simple operations. I'm gonna go and try to add a new row into this uh, encrypted samples table. I'm just gonna use a good for a name. I'm just gonna provide just some, this is encrypted text. This is not encrypted. So I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and add it. Then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and try to retrieve that information. And in this case, I've already put in a record, and so this GUID already represents a record that's inside of the system. I've essentially hard-coded that. And I wanted to see if I could use this value as part of a filter query. And then I've got just another read example where I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check to see 
if there's a record being returned where the encrypted column has this specific value. So I can go ahead and run this and this will work, this will be good. And this is like default behavior because I'm a system admin. And so this is when I ran into the situation I was working with someone else. They couldn't see the data coming out. The, the, they couldn't retrieve any of the encrypted data, but I could. The reason why I could was because I was a system admin. Now let's now pivot. And now what I am, I'm logged in as an account that does not have admin. So let's go ahead, same flow. I've essentially shared a copy of that previous flow. And now let's go ahead and see what happens with this specific execution. Right, so much like we saw in the specific uh, slides, we don't have permissions to go ahead and to add a column or a row to this specific table um, because this user doesn't have the correct attribute. Now, this isn't your custom role attribute that you would typically go ahead and set when establishing a custom security role inside of Dataverse. This is something in addition to the permission there. What we're going after specific columns and there's a specific thing that we have to go ahead and do from that perspective. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Okay, so I'm back. I am now an admin user once again. And so the way to do this is you come into the admin.powerplatform.com, find your selected environment, then go ahead, click on your environment URL. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and click on the gear. We're gonna click on advanced settings. Then from settings, we can go ahead, click on security. Click on field security profiles. This is exactly where we need to do to add those additional permissions. Now let's go ahead and let's create new and we're going to call this. So we'll just provide it an arbitrary name. Then let's go ahead and let's save. Once it's saved, we can then go ahead and click on users. Let's go ahead and add a user. We'll go ahead and add that non admin user that we had previously saw their flow fail. So let's go ahead, let's select them, select and add. Now, what we need to do now is basically go ahead and give permissions for the correct fields. Now, so what we see is this SharePoint encrypted column, which is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on this. This is where we can choose some like fine grained roles here in terms of what we want this user to be able to do. So we can choose to allow for reads. We're gonna say they can't update, but they can go ahead and they can create. So let's go ahead and click on the OK button. Let's go ahead and click Save. Now I'm assigning this to a specific user, but you can also go ahead and do this for specific teams as well. The other thing I would caution here is I created this field as an admin. Um, I've also seen in the documentation that it's asking you to publish customization. So if you're not seeing a field here, make sure that you're in Solution Explorer and you publish your customizations uh, for that to show up over here as well. So let's go ahead, let's close this out. And now what we can go ahead and do is flip back to that non-admin user and get them to run their flow again. Okay, so non-admin user once again. Let's go ahead, let's test. And fingers crossed, we should be good. And we are. So we can go ahead and we can create that record and then we can go ahead and retrieve that record. And as we saw, or as we talked about before, we've got two fields, right? So we've got our encrypted column and then we go ahead and we have our unencrypted column as well. Now, this is where things, you know, you have to be a little bit careful because it's one of those things where it's encrypted or you've got this additional security for a good reason. And you don't want, as I mentioned in the intro, you don't want Power Automate to be, you know, your leaky valve that basically exposes this type of information. So this is where you do want to go ahead and take advantage of those secure input, secure output features. As I mentioned before, we do have that uh, video inside of the, the description. So do go ahead and check this out in more details, but let's just go ahead and just see what this, what this looks like. And now what's going to happen is, all of this data will be protected and we won't see it in our run history. So this is a bit of a double-edged sword where you won't be able to see it in your logs, but when it comes time for troubleshooting, 
naturally you won't be able to see it as well. And so it's one of those things where when you're going ahead and, uh, and building and debugging, you can make sure everything works. Once you're good with everything, then turn that setting on. So here we can see that content not shown due to security configuration, uh, which is great. It won't show up in logs, but the data still gets used if we did want to pass that to a downstream system, we could, uh, but we just wouldn't show it up here in the logs. So that concludes the demo. Uh, hopefully that all makes sense for you. And uh, thanks for checking out this video. Okay, thanks again for checking out this video. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. You're obviously watching on YouTube. And as a result, always appreciate likes, comments, and subscribing. So with all that said, take care, have a great week, and we'll see you again next week on the channel. Bye.